everybody. So we've got an awesome little deal with the Cottage Chic mini book kit. It is a printable mini book kit, book kit at my website, MarianSmithDesigns.com. If you just go to shop and um, go to printables and mini books and it'll be somewhere in there. Um, or if you use a search engine for Cottage Chic. Um, this is what it looks like when you print it out. You print it out and then you cut them out. But you're going to double side print them. So in this kit you're going to get um, a page that looks like this with journaling lines and that's what you're going to print onto the back of all your pages so it makes a nice little journal backing and um, this is what the covers look like and I have a tutorial on my Ustream of how I did this fun cover for this book um, and it comes with a bunch of stuff it comes with um, some envelopes that I haven't folded together yet but I'm going to put those in the book it comes with all the little pages and then it comes with a bunch of little embellishments and journaling cards but I also double sided printed on those. On <laughs> I cannot talk today, I don't know why. So I'm going to show you how to bind this book. I've got a really fun binding technique. Um, and another th cool thing about this project is we're having a little contest on the Cottage Chic mini book. And the winner is going to get an awesome color laser printer. Um, it's going to be auto shipped from um, a manufacturer. So as soon as you win, it will be shipped that day, which is cool because I don't have to ship it from home. But it's a printer just like the one that I used on these. It prints awesome. It's an HP printer, color laser printer. Um, and so how this is going to work is you are going to email me your link to your video or your link to your blog. Or you can email me two photographs of your project to Marion, M-A-R-I-O-N, at apieceofcraft.com. My email link is going to be down in the description, so keep an eye out for that. Um, now, it is more beneficial to post, to send us a link to your blog or a link to your YouTube video because then you could put more pictures and we could see the project better. Um, if you just email me pictures, I'm saying there's a two picture limit because um, my email will not take anything large, anything too large, so I will never get the email if you send it and it's huge files. So if you have a blog or you have a YouTube channel, try to do that and send us the links. Otherwise, um, send us the two pictures and we'll save them. And what we'll do is we'll pick um, some finalists. I'm not sure how many. If we could put all of you on there, um, we probably... Actually, that's probably what we'll do. On our blog, we'll have all of your um, projects posted onto our blog. Um, if there's too many entries, then we'll have to do like a finalist thing and pick maybe ten finalists. Um, and we'll post the pictures on our blog, and then the people on the that go to the blog will vote in the comments on the project that they like the best. So I know it's going to be really, really, really hard because I'm sure everyone does great, but I'm going to see how much stuff, how many images I could put on my blog. If I could fit everybody on the blog, I'd much rather have everybody just vote on everyone's instead of picking finalists because I'm really bad at picking finalists. Um, and so I'll. I'll probably do that, but if I can't for some reason, I apologize. I hate doing this. It's, it doesn't mean that anyone else's work is any better than anyone else's. It's just really hard to do a contest this way. So I may just email, forward all of the information to some of my artsy addicts girls and have them pick the finalists so it's not it's bad. Um, but I will do my best. I promise I will do my best to try and get everybody posted onto the blog if I could fit everyone on there. Um, onto the blog or I'll, I'll do my best to figure something out to where it's not me having to pick finalists. So it's kind of just a fun contest. Um, it's only on the Cottage Chic book so if you've already purchased it and you already did your project make sure you send me pictures or a video or if you haven't gotten it yet and you think you might want to try, try out um, you can go to the website and buy the templates there. Um, but right now I'm going to show you the binding of the book. So what you want to do first is you're going to poke four holes. So see I've already done mine four holes into your pages and how I did mine was I took two pages, I layered them like this and then I took my needle, you want a large needle, and I poked two holes and I didn't measure the distance apart, I poked two holes just like this and then I took one, I flipped it over and I used those existing holes to poke my next holes and then I kind of do this sort of thing to get the holes on the other side and I use that as my guide and that'll space my holes completely um, evenly apart and you're going to need four holes so now you're going to fold all your patterns to the inside. I left the back of this one blank because I'm going to paint it. So you're going to take all of them and you're going to fold them so that the pattern is on the inside. And make sure they're all right side up. Just 
gorgeous. Life is. So see you've got some cool journaling lines on the back sides of these, which is awesome. All right, and that one goes like that. Okay, so I've got all my pages folded, and then also I took my envelopes, and one envelope I printed on the back side, that's what the front looks like, and I just picked one of the flaps, and I used the page as a template again. I put it over there, over the top, and I marked my holes again. So I've got holes in there. You want to keep your envelopes open because those are going to be a page in your book. So now what you're going to need is cloth or um, some mesh tape. I'm using this mesh drywall tape and let me just, this one's kind of ripping a little bit unevenly so I gotta fix it. So I'm gonna cut out a good piece, a piece that is just a little bit longer than my book here, just like that. And then I'm gonna take a needle with thread. I'm using hemp this time around to buy my book. And you want a nice long piece, so I'm getting a really, really long piece. I know you can't see here, but it is really long. And sometimes with the hemp, you get some uneven little spots here, so I'm just going to cut the little lump off there and make sure it's not going to affect my string here. And I'm getting a good, good long piece. And I would say about 30 yards should be, should be pretty good three to four yards of string. It's going to be pretty thick. And then it's going to be doubled on your thread so you're not tying a knot or anything like that. And you are going to go about a quarter of an inch in on your mesh tape or your drywall tape, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go on to start with the third hold here. So I'm going to go in at the top of my book here, top of my page, and I'm doing one page at a time. There should be about 10 pages. And you could layer these, so you could put a page inside a page. Actually, I might do that. Oh wait, no I'm not, because I want the pattern to be solid, so. I'm going in at the top here. I'm going to pull my thread all the way through for my hem. And sometimes you get some clumps in there, so it makes the hole a little bit bigger, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything, really. All right, so I've got my thread all the way through. Ah, sorry, I'm making a mess. I need to move these pages aside so you can see this. So I've got on the very top hole. Now I'm going to go into my mesh, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to pick one of these squares. So I'm basically going to tape down the side. It's just a little bit sticky, so it's not going to be permanent. And I'm just going to stick it into the little square that's right next to my thread just like this. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going to end up binding this into this mesh tape. So pull your thread all the way through. And you don't have to bind this book this way. This is just, a, I like to give little tips on the binding. You could do it any way you like. And um, this is just a fun thing that I came up with that I wanted to try. Alright, so I've got it through that hole. And now I'm going over the mesh tape and I'm going to go back into my page. So I'm going to stay in the same column and I'm going to find my next hole which is right here on my paper and I'm going to stick my needle back into my page just like this. I'll show you what the outside ends up looking like. And hemp is really cool to work with because it rarely gets tangled like the thinner threads that, you, that we use. And I like the way it looks, especially for this country sort of themed book. And I just pulled my thread out of the top one on accident. That's okay. I'll fix it right now. So I accidentally pulled this out, so I'm just going to try my best to stick it back in there. And success. Love it. Awesome. So that's what it looks like so far. So now I'm just lining my tape up and finding my next hole. I'm staying in the same column, and I'm going to get my needle in, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to stick it through that hole, and it's going to go up through my tape. And just keep 
pulling the thread through. Make sure it's nice and even on the inside. And then you're going to go into the bottom hole. So just like that. Now you're going to flip it over to the inside and you're going to tie these two pieces in. So we're going to tie it up at the top on the inside of the book. And this is going to be the only knot on the inside of your book. So it's a little bit bulky here, but it's so worth it for how it turns out. And you're going to want to glue this knot if you're using this hemp. And I'm just going to cut and leave a long little tail there for now. So that's a little bit bulky on the inside of that page, but it's the only page that's going to end up that way. And then now you're going to go back in through the second hole. So you're going to go in right there. It's going to cut or go out, I should say. I haven't done this one in a while. So the second from the top is the hole that you want to go back out of, not the top one. And then you're going to add your second page, which I'm making sure it's right side up, which is right there. And you're going to go out the second from the top hole on that second page in the column next to the one you just came in through on the tape. So right next to it. So it's kind of like graph paper. You're working with little squares with this tape. Pull that thread all the way through, and then on the inside of that second page, you're going to go out from the top hole. Okay. So I'm out the top one now. Just fix some of this thread a little bit. And stitching, book stitching is really hard, so I would say practice this on some blank paper first before you ruin your printed pieces. All right, so now I'm going back into the second hole. On the second page. So we're not working with that first page anymore. That one is done. We're working on the second one. All right, and then on that second page, you're going to go out the third hole from the top. And then you're going to go in through the bottom hole on that second page. And then, just like we did the first time, we're going to work out of the middle again. So we're going to go on the inside and we're going to go to the second from the bottom hole up. And that's how we get the needle back out. Okay. So we're going out that same hole in that second page. Pretty tight. Okay, and then now we're ready to add our third page. So make sure it's upright. And you're going to keep doing this same thing. So I'll do it one more time and then I'll fast forward. So you're going to go through the second from the bottom hole, the hole that's in the middle of your third page. All the while you're going into the holes that are next to each other on the tape, the little square holes. So you're changing your square holes each time and you'll you'll get it once you see it. It's like graph paper or like stitching. And then you're going to go out the bottom hole and just make sure you're in the next square over on the tape, which I am. Pull tight all the way through and then into the middle.
just like that and then you're gonna go into the next out the next hole sorry and just make sure you're in the same column of the tape so we're going out and just make sure you got all your little threads tight and then you're gonna go into the top And this is a hard stitch, so don't feel bad if you can't do it. I'm trying to explain it the best I can, but I know it's going to be really difficult and it's the best way I know how to do it. So, And now you're going to go right back out the, the one on the bottom that you came from. And that one's the middle one. And then you'll just keep adding pages, just like that. getting caught on my page there. So I'm pulling these nice and tight. And then now you'll just add your next page and you'll keep repeating those steps. So my next page is here. So I'm going to add that down here. And I'm going to go through the second hole again, just like we did this last time. So you, this part you may have to rewind and repeat just so you can really get a good idea of what I'm doing. Um, but right now I'm going to go ahead and finish adding all my pages to the guts and then I'm going to show you how to add the cover. Alright guys, I've got all of my pages stitched into um, drywall tape. So that's what it looks like and you should end off somewhere around the middle like this. So when you open it up, all your pages are in there and then you'll see I just added the little envelopes into the middles and then I can um, glue these all together in just a bit but see it's just in the inside and it'll glue together like this and then the top will open like that and now I'm going to show you how to put the covers on even though I'm not really done with my covers so what you want to do with this leftover piece now is instead of coming back out like I did here um, you're going to go I'm going to go back in through that same hole because I wasn't supposed to come out it come out of it. So let me just make sure I'm not going to get my thread tangled up. So I'm just pulling it, the, pulling it right back into that page and I added an envelope on that last page. So you can actually, if you wanted to, you could print out a bunch of these envelopes and um, put a lot more. The kit comes with two of them. So I just used the two. But you could print out more than that if you really like them and you want to have more envelopes in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm back on the inside now. I'm going to snip off the string right about there. And then I'm going to tie it. I'm going to spread the two strings apart. I'm going to tie it to this piece here. So see how I'm doing this? Just untie it nice and tight. Double knot. I'm going to snip that. And then later I'll glue my envelope together. But for now, I'm just going to close my book, and I'm going to show you how to glue your, put your covers on. So on each side, I went a little skimpy on this one side. You should have a little bit of an overhang on this tape. So that's what you want. So what you're going to do, it's going to look like this. You're going to take your first half of your cover, and first, you actually want to cut the extra of this drywall tape. So just cut it to the length of the page there just like that. So I've trimmed it up. Make sure your book is upright, which mine is. And you're going to take a really strong glue. Fabri-Tac is great. Um, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac to get it to stick down initially and then I'm going to use Scrap Dots to really hold it together because Scrap Dots is awesome. So I'm going to peel off some of this excess. And let's see if I got the clog out of my glue. I think I did. And you're going to put a thin line of glue right where your liner is on your page. So from the top to bottom, you're going to put a thin line of glue right there. Just like that. And then you're going to take that excess that's hanging off the edge and you're just going to bump it right up over that glue. 
just like this. And I'm just going to slide mine around until my page is even with the liner page. And I'm going to press down so that the tape is sticking pretty well to that. And you just want to hold it until the glue is dry. You want it to be dry before you move on to the next part. And you need an, a really strong adhesive for this next part. So I'm going to set this right here so it stays upright. I'll put my scissors in there. So I'm going to grab some ribbon now. Pick any ribbon you like. I'm using um, some of this ruler ribbon. This is by D. Stevens. I just gotta get it open here. And I really like it. So I'm gonna cut off a piece that is about the height of my book. And you're gonna need two of these for the front and the back. And this ribbon, this ribbon tends to fray a little bit, so you may want to take a lighter to the ends or a thin line of glue to the ends so it doesn't fray too much, although I think if it frayed a little bit, it would look kind of cool. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take my scrap dots here. You can use any kind of silicone-based glue for this or liquid nails. I'm going to put a thin line of glue all along one side. And then I'm going to open up that front page and this, you could leave the book just like this with that fabric hat glue down, but I like to cover up that seam and I just really like this ribbon so I want to use it somewhere. And I'm just going to sandwich that drywall tape in between my ribbon and my cover just like this. So this, um, these scrap dots, the scrap dots takes a really long time to dry so I would leave it for a few hours just like this before you mess with it too much. And then that's how you get that front cover on. This is what your spine's gonna look like. Really cool, loving it. So that's how the front cover is gonna glue on and you're gonna do that same exact thing for your back cover. So I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna do the same thing for my back cover. So make sure it's right side up. Put a thin line of this Fabri-Tac on there. And same thing I did before, I'm going to line up my pages with my liner on the sides here. I'm going to press down into that fabric tack. So you're going to get your hands a tad bit messy, but that's okay. We're all crazy crafters, right? So I'm pushing it down to the glue, make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm going to prop it up on my little tripod leg here for a minute. I know I'm off camera, but I'm going to get my ribbon ready. And I'm going to grab my second piece of ribbon, and I'm going to put a thin line of my scrap dots on there again. Just like that. And then you're going to open it up, just like we did the front cover, and you're just going to sandwich the drywall tape in between your ribbon and your cover, just like this. So hopefully you guys can get a good look at this. So I'm pushing my ribbon all the way to the very seam. I'm pressing down. And then I'm going to close my book, and I'm going to let this set for about an hour for that um, scrap dots to really set in there. And I promise you this will never come apart because that glue is super strong. And that drywall tape just is awesome. It works great for this kind of thing. So this is what the binding looks like. Pretty cool. Kind of matches the whole theme I've got going with the cottage chic look. And there's my cottage chic book. So don't forget about the printer contest. We are giving away that color laser printer. Just email me. My email's right down there or right down there in the description. Um, or you can go to my website and use the contact form. Um, but my email is marion at a piece of and I've got it right down there in the link. Just like I said, and that is the Cottage Chic book. So stay tuned because tomorrow, or maybe even tonight, I'll have a whole other video on July's um, daily journal, which we're still doing our daily journal for the whole year this year. So every month we've got a brand new journal, a printable journal that you could download. And um, you take a picture a day all year long. I've still been doing mine, although I did skip June 
which was last month because I had a really, really crazy busy month. So I hope you're able to make your own journals from scratch. Um, but July is definitely still on. I'm finishing up May. May is taking me a little while because it's a questionnaire book. It's really cool. But I am finishing both months. And July is going to be up to date tonight. So I hope to see some of those from you guys too. And I hope you like the technique. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this book. Um, good luck, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.